Yeah, why don't you press start? We're going live in about three seconds, okay? Okay, press, press start. <coughs> Hello folks and welcome back to uh, another sensational day on Sydney Harbour. Warwick, Brooklyn and Mark Healy with us. We're going out to cover off on race four. Can Seve Jarvan get another one, boys? What's the story? It's not, it's not fresh, is it? They're all on twos. It's not, is it? This uh, forecast was maybe for a bit more wind, but either way around, the whole fleet's gone with the small rigs. It's on the kind of cusp between the two of those. Forecast is for the breeze to build, so not a lot of controversy from that point of view in the boat park, but so far the story is pretty clearly three races and three wins to gotta love at seven and there's only four races to go whichever way you look at it we're going to try and find sub stories subplots as best we can but the real story here is the gotta love at seven are to date so far in a slightly different class it's not they're not winning by the four or five minutes that they used to a couple of years ago but each of their victories i mean to me has felt comfortable uh, and I suspect that uh, that's how it looks on screen but uh, it doesn't make it any lesser a gatter but we have got one outstanding champion current performance yeah absolutely mark they've been so far uh, almost faultless um, just going back to the weather and the rig there was a lot of conjecture with about you know maybe half the fleet whether to go big big rig or second rig um, I was with the the seven camp when the big fella Ian Murray was uh, on a phone conversation with Roger Batham, clouds trying to make a decision. Sea breeze, I've been monitoring it during the, say from 11.30 onwards and the, uh, the model and the actual breeze at Decent Channel Pile Light was lining up until about 1.30 when it just wasn't quite up to what the model was saying. But the last one to pull the trigger in terms of rig selection was Smeg. Seven basically decided to race the fleet. In other words, go with the majority. They were late to uh, make their selection. But ultimately, and in the end, David Whitney's team on Smeg elected to go for second sale as well. So as you said, Mark, the whole fleet on second. And, it, and just sitting here now, visually and, and, and what we're feeling, this breeze has just had a little kick on in the last five minutes. It's always difficult in the uh, rigging area, in the pit area, where the club is and where these boats are rigged because you don't get a true feeling of what the pressure is further in the harbour, do you, Killer? Well, that's right. It, it's just a totally different start-up to yesterday. The, this breeze was probably fresher than what we're looking at now early in the day, before 12 o'clock even, so it's a later start. But on that... Uh, clip yesterday when Mark was talking to just a brief chat to Harold Cubmore how he weighed up uh, gotta love it, Seven's performance is pretty good Mark, he, he basically said these guys are really on their game now, they're seriously improved and just to watch them is a real treat the way they manage their race, like yesterday I noticed that they probably, off the off the start line of the first mark Bushel Boy, they probably did about five tacks in total, they were just doing long stretchy uh, legs into the out of the tide and uh, just got the wheels underneath it and it just took off again, didn't it? It's just the way they're sailing, how they're doing the whole project. Yeah, no, no doubt the, the boat handling's pretty strong, that's for sure. I think you may remember anyone who watched the race yesterday will remember a Lee Bao tack, which is probably a key part of the race. You know, it, uh, it changed the uh, pattern of that beat, it got Smeg out of sequence with the tacks out of the tide. And you only pull that off in 20 knots of breeze if you're very confident of your boat handling. Um, they possibly could have crossed clear ahead. I asked David Witt about that. He reckoned that he might have got a piece of them either way around, but uh, they went for the Lee Bao, executed flawlessly, and 20 seconds later, Smeg were forced to tack away, and that did make a bit of a difference to that race. So whatever's happening on the boat speed front, there's no question they're not short of speed, but as soon as it gets fresh, particularly, the boat handling is uh, close to 10 out of 10. Yep, for sure. One thing I picked up, guys, just doing my my rounds, was a lot of people were looking at their rigs after yesterday. They, they were making changes to the interesting this deep into the season that uh, they're feeling they weren't quite right. Did you chase Coco up about that thought that I thought he said he softened his rig up? Did anybody talk to Coco this morning? You did? I, I had a chat to David Witt, uh, Dave, Dave O'Connor, sorry, Dave O'Connor, the sheet hand on Thurlow Fisher. 
and we were just having a little bit of discussion about you know how you only have to have one little thing out and the, and the boat goes out of balance and doesn't feel right and, and we we're sort of using the analogy in you know 49ers where you might have five rig settings in a 49er and, and it's real micro settings on the jib tack and things like that and they just felt you know he said it's just a couple of schoolboy errors on their behalf and the way they set the boat up and that you know just slight jib sheet angle and things like that just the boat didn't feel quite right so they've made a couple of little changes and really just doing their homework well, just, yeah. just one thing guys while we jump in we've got a little bit of time just the uh the, the top placings obviously we got seven out <laughs> on top with three wins then we got Thurlow Fisher in second place on 17 points. And then tied, tied for the podium goes Scott's junior sailing team, team racing. Always enthusiastic. Future champions right there, potentially. And so I think that's, a, that's AP up. But yeah, just getting back to that, uh, tied for third on the podium so far is what we've been calling Team USA, they've called themselves Hark Harkin now and Mojo Wines, but it's really tight. There's nothing in it from really with the drops from top eight boats. So I reckon any any of those top eight could be, you know, on the podium at the end of the end of the week. A lot of boats finishing very close together yesterday, weren't there? A lot of little uh, little cusps of boats all together. So within uh, within this regatta of 20. 4, 25 boats, whichever it is, uh, there's a bunch of little battles already being developed. And today, well, it is a little bit light for small rigs, but it's not unsailable. It's just the bottom end of the range. So we're going to see who can squeeze the power out of the out of the little rig. We're on an AP, as Warwick said. It just means that uh, although we've got to the official start time, the race committee, for whatever reason, are not quite ready. I think the spectator the ferry is, yeah, it is in place. Um, and that, dis uh, that AP, that red and white flag, will be coming down quite soon. And when it does, that will be six minutes. So we'll try and give you a decent count into the start sequence. So wherever you're watching this, whether you are late at night in the uh, other hemisphere of the world or whether you're in the States, uh, late afternoon, early evening, if you're on the West Coast or if you're in the UK, yeah, it would be a horrible time of the day for you at uh, about midnight. But wherever you are, or you might be watching this recorded, it's quite fun to set your own watch at home and actually do your own time sequence. And we'll try and film this as best we can. It starts one of the hardest things for us to, to film because we're kind of pegged in. Bob's doing his best with the boat but we can't really go too far onto the racetrack. We've got to stay where we are and we look down that line and our camera tries to focus all the way down there. It's a hard thing for us to do but uh, as the race breaks up and develops a bit it's a lot easier to follow. Start is always an important bit. How many people say to you Warwick, I'm sure they say it to me all the time, well we've just got to get our starting sorted and uh, however well you do it you always know you could do it better starting is the one of the eternal problems yeah. isn't it in this fleet i had a chat to uh tommy clout last night in the bar pretty late after all our trials and tribulations anyway he was uh rather relaxed and big smile on his face they were really stoked to get a second yesterday and he said it was the way they got the uh got the old fella which is david witt uh to get off the line in that electric start they had was matty walk and uh <laughs> Tommy Cloud pulled the sails on with about five seconds to go. That spat him out. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, brother, we're going. Yeah, you coming with us or you're not? That's right. <laughs> Great so, start. Oh, about that, I put my foot on the accelerator. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. But you know, going back to Mark's comment, it's every sailor in the world, no matter what you sail, getting the start, holding your lane for the first couple of hundred metres, getting to the first shift in the appropriate position. I mean, we all know that it's, uh, it's a very difficult thing to do, but when you get it right, boys are good. The other thing, uh, I, you know, we saw Knight Frank get into all that froth and bother uh, going into Shark Island turn mark, and when they stalled out and got subsequently out of whack with their with their trim and ex, all that sort of stuff, but that that is something that they uh, saw Nick Douglas interviewed uh, one of the guys, uh, somebody. Matthew Coots or something, but he was, he was on the boat, I don't know if he's in the bow or not, but they just got way out of sorts in there, and, and the danger is, you cannot afford to stop the boat uh, in those situations, and David Witt, if you look at that clip again, you'll see David was in the same problem, but he kept powering his boat up, even though it was a light, soft patch, 
they just pushed the boat up. They overtook, but they kept the kept the speed on the boat and they could control the rudder. It's when you come to a dead stop and get a sudden acceleration, you just you know you're in trouble. Anyway. Well, the thing is, kilo two. It's just as we see all the time. It's really fun funky there. Okay, AP has just come down, but you just get those little micro bursts come out over the hill of Vaucluse into that area near Shark Shark Island. As you said, if you stopped and you get one on the beam. It's uh, it's tough. <laughs> Game over. So this brewery seems to where we are anyway. It just seems what do we got here? Do you reckon, guys? About eight to ten. Not second sail by a long shot. Yeah, it's just second sail, isn't it? It's still a little bit patchy. Looks like there's more pressure to me further up the course. And uh, we witnessed that. We witnessed that yesterday when we got that second kick on. Uh, about halfway through the race, it took a while for that, that new pressure to really solid pressure to feed down to this right bottom area. Here, yeah. Remember we saw Yamaha, we thought theoretically they'd done a, a good job, the right thing being low, low yeah. coming down on this final, but, but they weren't in pressure. Okay, that's five minutes guys. So the old question, and the answer that we we'll, won't know for about another eight minutes, is the pin going to pay? Can they advance far enough to tack and cross on port, cross the fleet on port? Or is the uh, boat end going to pay? Or just like the other day, two races ago when John Winning on Yandu was about a third of the way down the line, just got a little righty the others didn't get and uh, came out the leader. Well, that's, I'm tipping that the boat to a third of the way down will be pretty good and uh, the other boats will struggle. David Witt got out of there brilliantly because yesterday, first time I've seen anybody get away across the fleet from the pin end and they did it yesterday. But that was because he got that blinding start courtesy of Matt Walk and uh, Tom Clout, I would have thought. But four anyway, minutes. Four to go. And uh, we're right at the bottom of the tide. It's a big tide again today so incoming tide so they're punching tide upwind tide probably not a huge factor for the the first third of this beat but then it's going to certainly come into play and uh, I don't think the breeze is far enough right for them to really hit the Nielsen Park shore so we may see that western shore ducking behind the headlands trying to get out of the tide that might be the uh, the gameplay today. Well, there's certainly enough pressure to keep that moth flying. <laughs> yep. Yep. <coughs> Coming up for three minutes. All right, I'll try and get a feeling of who's thinking what in terms of where they want to start. Mojo towards the boat, just advancing across the line, having a good look at the breeze, having a discussion. Bows about, up too, was it? Yeah, about what they want. I was actually looking at the angle of the boat. It looks very right to me, the start boat, I should say. Yeah, but look at the wind gate. Wind yeah, gear. I know, it's a little bit to the left. It's a bit of, I don't know what's going on there. A bit of tide, I'm not sure. But seven is searching around the pin end. Smeg is searching around the pin end. About 2.30 to go. Mojo now heading down towards the pin. This will all start to pan out in about 30 seconds. We'll start to see people setting up for their, their final and what they're trying to achieve for that first vital 200 metres after the gun goes. And one thing for sure is that, and we all know, you've got to be front row. Huh. There is only one row. There's one row of pain. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're in the southeasterly course, we saw in the States, and everyone got a bad start, had to tack, ended up leading at the top mark. Any feedback on the course record that we uh, you started that chatter yesterday was? There's quite a few people making out <laughs> they, they have one. Yeah. There's a few people reckon they've got it. I've got, got a uh, 
an email from a guy who reckons he had the course record in 95 with Michael Spees on the mighty Winfield. <laughs> Julian Bethwaite thinks he, he won it in the AAMI. Um, uh, and they may well have. And, and Yeah, anyway, we'll talk about that later. But boom, we started a nice little thread there. <laughs> it's a good story, isn't it? Who knows? Uh, you can claim anything with a lack of data, can't you? We're coming up to the one-minute gun. It's two seconds to go, so you watches one minute to the start of Heat 4. This year's JJ. I'm just wondering, because what you guys are talking about, the committee boat not hanging to the wind, uh, about whether maybe there's just the last remnants of the tide going out. Maybe maybe half an hour, possibly. Maybe, if that's the case, it is right now, is it? Bang on it. So if the tide's following the chart, which it usually does, but not absolutely always, then maybe it's slack. Maybe it's slack it's tide for now. now. Anyway, so we're looking down the, the line. You can see Gotta Love at 7, right? We can just about see at the top of the committee boat from where we are. That's Gotta Love at 7, who are not quite the hard pin. Smeg pushing them hard to try and own the pin. A bit of a battle between Smeg and Gotta Love at 7. Gotta Love at 7, a little bit in irons at the moment, having get, getting flicked onto starboard, onto port tack, which they won't like, going backwards. This is a real test of low-speed boat handling, one of the toughest things to do in a skiff. But uh, in the middle of the line, you can see the boats trying to hold their position close to the line as possible. We're at 11 seconds to go. Smeg is just leaning on the boat now. Seven, a little bit of trouble down there, but can Smeg get up to the boy or not? In four seconds to go, they're Ooh. in trouble too. Asco looked early to me. They did. Hey, only one gun so far. There's two guns. Yeah, I think it, we're calling it as an individual only. Wow, who's going to go back? I reckon ASCO for sure and need to go back. Compass markets. Compass, yeah, they're pretty sure. Right in front of us, Compass go back. Down the other end of the line, while well, Smeg got themselves, were a little bit too greedy. They try to really own the pin and in so doing just completely snookered themselves. So that's not the, the kind of great start that Smeg got yesterday. Got a lot at seven also. They've become the hard left boat by default, but have got a little bit of dirty air in front of them from what we can see. But at this end of the line, I don't know, I'm kind of thinking early days, but this, this group, the middle right group, I think you call it, Bob, middle of the line, they look a lot better than the, the lured yeah, end, and yeah, that lured sure. end have got to fall into that Bradley's vacuum any second soon. Well, I think Mersk, Graham Catley has probably got him at the right line. What do you reckon, was it? Oh, he's brained it. And he's, he's got three. It. <laughs> Kiwis, like he is going fast. The only thing he's probably might have enough to, to cross. He's just starting to go a little bow down now. Kitchen is in really good shape. Yeah. But Merce, Graham Catley from New Zealand and his team, wonderful start. And I think the guys at the pen, they just have one way or leverage, you know, a line bias to uh, pull this off. So, you know, it's uh, top third. To boat. Yeah, Mojo's uh, buying some rubbish down there. They're way buried. I reckon Mersk, if they can pull off a good tag, might cross this lot. I've uh, got to love it's got his uh, bow out in front of those pin end starters. Asco's still continuing to sail on, but I reckon he was at least four seconds early. Really, Seven needs uh, Panasonic and Aeon to uh, tack to release them out of that corner. Otherwise, they could get pushed in hard and get hurt. Sometimes it's difficult from where we are to, to actually get a true perspective of the uh, the angles and how far ahead these guys are. But Knight's Frank behind is up, so Seven's gonna have to tack any second now. They are a little bit advanced on Aeon. Okay, Panasonic's bailing out. Aeon's bailing out. Seven. They might just have enough pressure in there to get out of this. Asco has rights pushing into the rocks. Seven soft, seven soft coming out. Seven have to take Asco stern. Thurlow tax, they bail out. Mersk line, Graham Catley from New Zealand. Crosses the line. He's going for his tack, yep. David Witt, I, that I was looking for David Witt before. He's uh, taking a pile of stern, so he must have got hurt in there and he's oh. gone hard. To the, to the east. Yeah, he got really hurt, Kilo. He was, as we said, front row or pain. And you're right, he's really pushed out there, which normally doesn't pay off. You just sort of... So Rag and Famish held up off that boat end too. He's sort of holding his own there, isn't he? Yes, for sure. It was Rag and Famish and Kitchen Maker and Night the three boats together at that top. Well, well, actually, Rag and Furnish was the top boat, the most boat end boat. They're all pushing quite hard out into the right, aren't they, guys? 
Yeah, right paid nice, isn't it? God Lover 7 got forced about by uh, Yandu just then. That's why 7 are going back that way. It wasn't, I think, what they wanted to do. There's Yandu on camera now just tacking. And the question is, will Kitchen Maker be able to stop God Lover 7 tacking? Well, 7 attacking now. They're going to have to duck Kitchen Maker. So 7 being made to do a lot of, probably a bit more boat hand than they really wanted to, but can't find a lane out of that corner. Now it's a Rag and Famish who'll cross clear ahead of them. So you're looking at the left-hand group now. We're, we're here we are at about a couple of minutes after the start, maybe a little bit more than that. And hard left, Kitchen Maker and Rag and Famish coming straight towards us on Port Tack. He's got to love at 7. And you can see a whole load of boats passing behind them, heading off towards the hard left. But generally speaking, the middle of the line, and I'm just looking towards the middle just briefly now, we'll, we'll, we'll show you a little bit later what's going on in the middle, but there's a bunch of big right-hand shifts out there, and for the first time, got three days, Warwick or so, the left has looked better. This seem to be the place to be all the time. Well, right now, the right in the middle looks pretty nice. So we're here with the group on the left-hand side. Rag and Famish leading this group into the bay by quite a lot, and behind them it's Panasonic. Asco, and we're just uh, looking at the back of this group. There's Third of Fisher, we're looking at right now, and just to the right of them, there's Aeon. There's all the best of the group on the right hand side. There's a lot happening to the left. Uh, Peter, maybe we can come a little bit left here and look at what's happening in the middle of the fleet. There's a lot of boats on starboard attack, big bow up action. Maersk still doing nicely. Yamaha, not bad. Sea Tech, three Kiwis in close proximity. Belonging just to lure to them, and out on the hard, hard right. Looks like Mika Lane with a nice big righty as well. Knight Frank with a nice big righty. Um, the right's not a bad place to be. Well, the, you know, at times you're getting that right and flicks. And as we said, it, right at the start, it was at the bottom of the tide. So maybe just not a lot of water coming in right now. But, geez, it's hard to, to keep it, you know, for the righty to last. I'm actually seeing Mika a little bit bowed down now. Knights Frank Let's go all the way out. But in front of a Sea Tech from New it's, Zealand. It's a light air suiting their uh, crew weight, was it? Yeah. And they've got the aero sock over the mainsail. They look like they're going through the water very nicely, those guys. They're ahead of seven. Out of this group here, it's hard for us to get the angle, but I think, C -Tech's I think got they it. could be leading. I think there's enough gauge of rag and famish for them to cross rags. So we haven't. What do you, this do is it? this is a new day in that you know this soft second sail, isn't it? Yeah, it's certainly uh, it brings in different modes. I've been watching Kilo, and I'm not seeing a huge speed advantage on seven at this stage. I mean, this pack's all sort of chomping up to to this shore. Pretty much the same speed. Well, he's, not a, he's in a pretty good spot to escape as he likes to. He's got clear air at least. But he's, uh, I think the Sea Tech's going along way quicker than him right now. If we can line him up, we'll just get up there and have a yeah, look. But he might be a little exciting, a little bit lower. Rags is going to have to bail out of there any second. Quite obviously, or they're going to hit real estate. <laughs> but you can get some nice little shifts coming back out of there off that shore. You get the the wind just bending around, so the compressors. Now bow on bow, Sea Tech seven, C Mojo just down to lure, being patient. Sea Tech will cross rags, seven will cross rags. Obviously, these guys going this way have rights. Okay, the next one, rags will cross Thurlow. Okay, we're going to have these guys tacking in a second, Kilo. Yeah. We've got a nice cover on them, Was. Yeah, we're in good shape. <laughs> and I reckon they've got enough time to tack and, and duck. I don't think they can call water on us. Looking very comfortable, the boys in Sea Tech. Yeah, sliding along. Nice big hole where they are. There's no rocks there. They can basically go all the way and almost touch up in this bay. Rolling it over now, Sea Tech. See where his bow ends up. Okay, now the thing is, we've got a real split decision or decision making process in this fleet as we pan back around. You may be able to see there's boats all the way in the eastern shore, and then we've been following that gaggle of boats pushing hard up into the 
the western or sometimes called northern shore. So we'll find out in a minute. Oh, we've got ferry. a huge floating chicane going at about 15 knots coming right through the middle of these blokes. So it's, that's going to... That's going to ruffle their feathers up, was it? Well, it's also going to dictate what they can do, isn't it? Like they might w be wanting to, you know, get to the east but can't now because of the ferry. Seven elects to come back. Sea tech tax in front and below seven. So we're not going to know the outcome of this for a while, but I've got a gut feeling this is the leading pack. Interesting what a big recovery snag have made here, isn't it? Like they were last off the start line and they went hard right. I think they rolled the dice. I mean, we kept saying the right didn't, didn't look too risky. I uh, got a fitting David Witt rolled the dice as well. He didn't want to follow the group left. So um, yeah, all that noise is the ferry, as, you, as all you regular watchers know, the ferry has right of way, partly because he's a shitload bigger and partly because he actually has right of way. But um, there we go. So hey, Mark. the ferry is in charge. Hey Mark, look what Gotta Love It did to SeaTech uh, in that little last yeah, 30, minute that. 30. It, but isn't that interesting? And just behind Gotta Love It 7 is Rag and Famish. So that distance has stayed about the same. But look at Smeg. Smeg were absolutely clearly last on the racetrack. And we watched the left-hand group. We were saying all the time this is the leaders in the left. But meantime, out of the clouds came David Witt. And, uh, well, he must have some boat speed. But I think he got the right side of those right-hand shifts. And he's not leading by any means. But he's right back in the mix. And blimey, he'll take that now, won't he? From off the start line, he looked like he was in all sorts of trouble. You know, just going back to that two, oh, it's slightly out of shot, but Knight Frank, that was started near the boat and pushed out to the right quite early, and then it's obviously come back to this shore, has done quite well. So a lot of options out here on this harbour at the moment. And right now, where we are, I just felt a pressure increase. The breeze has gone up a little bit. And as we were discussing earlier, sometimes when you get that pressure build, it takes a long time to work its way down the harbour. So we're getting more pressure at the top end of this course. Pretty tight race, was it? Yeah. Far up the first beat. Now Sea Tech, the next one being Sea Tech, will have to tack before seven. So they're going to hit the land earlier than seven. There's seven clearly across. So seven, shall we dare say it? Has hit the lead. Well, you, you, remember we were talking about the, the pair of them before when we were abreast of them and SeaTech was trucking along, he was to weather of them. Mm. And within uh, no time at all, seven stepped out, came together and he was on top of him and then just passed him right there. Yeah, well, I saw SeaTech actually starting a slightly lower mode than seven. And what was just out of shot and just happened behind us was Lumix, who had rights and was bow to bow basically with Thurlow Fisher. Thurlow didn't see them and got caught out and had to do an emergency tack basically and uh, lost a bit of time. Nice Frank. Oh, that hurt them because they had to dark Thurlow but then there was a yachting Australia, what they call a YA mark, in their way and had to actually take a bigger bigger duck. But what's let them out of jail is Lumix has uh, tacked back and lost a man overboard. I don't think they had to hit, hit the MOB button, but um, because they knew where he was. Have a go at appliances online and furlough. Yeah, good battle. So appliances just bow, bow ahead enough at the moment. Thurlow lifting off them. We might have to call showroom here, was it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mojo calls starboard on Lumix, so they've had a frantic last 20 seconds. Now Mojo pushing it all the way to the edge, hoping that they can get to lay. I don't know that they will. So now we get the convergence of 
The boat's elected Ooh. to work the right hand. Big duck on Mojo. Yamaha, who elected to work the right hand shore versus, you know, the, the left. And uh, later in the beat, the left has certainly paid. Yamaha could get this, could be on lay here. Oh, there's someone very high. Ctex up very high. <coughs> so, give us two minutes and we'll find out the outcome of beat one. It's been busy out this left-hand side, isn't it? And in the end, not that many got fully committed to the right after we were halfway out. They all sort of gravitated this little way, but it seems like despite all the uh, the busyness on the left-hand side, seven picked their way up nicely through that group and I think are going to once again, looking like they are heading to lead to that top mark first. It's a battle between seven and SeaTech. We've talked about a couple of little near-miss port and star between the two of them all the way up there, so clearly SeaTech's going pretty nicely. Seven, though, as ever, finding a small little edge on the rest of the fleet, just enough to put themselves into pole position. Just uh, coming past... Maersk, who've had a fantastic beat. Haven't seen much of them this series so far. Graham Catley from New Zealand, but uh, much, much better showing from him today. Obviously likes these downrange strawberry conditions and a fantastic start from him. Probably won the star and still sailing nicely. So good luck to him. Anyway, we're approaching the, the top mark for the first time. We're bang on ley line as usual. Bob's got the ley line beautifully positioned. We've, got, we've won that one, but uh, of the sailing boats, got a love at seven approaching the ley line, a little bit over it actually, so comfortable ley line for them. I think second is going to be SeaTech and somehow or other, David Sm Wed Smeg, have, I think have got themselves up to third, but we'll have a look at that in a second. Yeah. For now, the interesting thing is there's a small cruising, yeah. a few cruising Check boats are also using the same mark to go around, so that'll add to a little bit of excitement. Oh, the second one's a port starboard on seven. Anyway, at the mark, there's got a love at seven, bearing away in a gap between the two cruisers, threading the needle, nice work. And seven go around the first mark of race four in first position. And second around on the approach now. Ooh, Alex Failings from SeaTech, he's had a pretty busy beat, but held on. Can he get through the gap? Oh, he can't get through the gap. Yeah, he's going to have to roll the top. Not quite enough gap to go through the, uh, the, the narrow inside lane, so he goes around the outside. And enormous recovery, huge recovery from Smeg. He does go on the inside line. Fourth place, Rag and Famish, a great recovery. Bear in mind, they've, they, yesterday they had to retire, couldn't finish the race. They've had two retirements out of three. Anyway, looking in much better form today. And next around, that's going to be in fifth position. There is Graham Catley on mess. Great beat from him. Another slow yacht coming oh, into a lot play. Of, a lot of port starboards coming here. That's a Knight, Frank and Panasonic, a port starboard. In the meantime, DeLonghi cruise at the top of the cruising boat. As will appliances online, they'll be going around in fifth, sixth, and seventh. Well, Lumix is in trouble with this. Is yeah, can, Lumi can Lumix get through the gap? Lumix is saying, Stay keep up, up. lads. <laughs> oh, these cruising boats had no idea they were in for this oh, kind of man. afternoon, did they? No. It's not ideal, to be honest. I think, uh, I think absolutely. They are, they're racing, but it's, uh, they didn't mean to get in, in involved in this, but <laughs> they're doing their best to keep out the way, the poor lads. Couldn't have told that more. Uh, their boats are going about 20 knots slower than our skiffs. What do you do? I mean, unmatched boats. Well, you this change is... your underwear for starters. Well, hang on, blokes. These blokes have got their race faces on. <laughs> Mate, this, we don't know. This could be their biggest regatta of their life. It's I mean, got their full attention. The oh, what's going on here, Coco? Wow, we've got to get down here. We'll have to overtake the slow-moving 7.005 and get down to the front. Seven's gone. Crazy. Just going back to what you were saying, Mark, like Smeg, they found something. They got the full get out of the car, didn't they? They got pushed hard. The yep. Road B got pushed yep. hard out where they didn't want to go. And they've come out of it okay. And they're in a situation, we've seen it, how they went yesterday. You know, whoever's going to be you know, two, threes and fours out of that gaggle of boats that are fighting for second place in this championship at the moment, that's going to be all the difference. Great racing down here, was it? They're all ripping into each other. All close together. Yeah. Plenty of drive action going on. Plenty of opportunities. And, and you know what? They're coming through. Wednesday afternoon on Sydney Harbour in the summer, there's a lot of what they call beer can racing goes on. So you have a lot of yachts, and the thing is, 
they're the little chicanes all the way through this race course at the moment. So the boys have to manage that. We talk about it quite often. Part of the strategy on a boat like an 18 that's so quick and you can't just sort of flick it around where you want, when you want, is that traffic management, anticipating what's about to happen and the convergence on, on other slower boats. Just looking at it, Peter's got the camera on, gotta love it. He's about to make his jibe to approach, there he goes. And you've got a, a three boats, Merskline, Merskline, Smeg and it's uh, Rag and Famish all in each other's hip pockets with uh, SeaTech right on Seven's line. So we'll get off the back of SeaTech and show you what Sevy's looking at and he's looking at, but they're all pretty much on the same line here. And the thing is, to the left, we haven't quite gone, the, we'll see it in a minute, there's a barge, there's a working barge. And we saw yesterday David Witt elected to go below it, <laughs> or maybe got pushed below it. SeaTech now starting to get a little bit softer and they can just get above it, Seven's above it. I think the rest of the pack will get above it. SeaTech's marginal on this. Oh, I don't think he'll get there. He won't get there. And, and you know what? There's another one just beyond it. Oh, no. Seven has to flag their chute to get across the top of the barge. SeaTech's about 30 metres below them, so that's a harder situation. About Ooh, to get a big bullet. There's a bullet. Go below, go, boys. boys send go it. below. Just open the throttle, just go for it. Yeah, that's the only way through there. Low. Yep. That, well, that bullet decided the outcome and what they were going to do there. So it might be worth chasing these guys because they've got another barge, another false island to uh, navigate. And uh, here's my prediction. I think it's going to be shoot off down here, guys. I don't think they're going to make it all the way. Well, he's safe to do what he's doing. It's not going to hurt him if he just drives it into the island, knocks it, knocks it off. He's still in good shape. Except he's got dragged up. Exactly. Exactly. If I'm wrong, they could do the up and under. Yeah, up and under, under the post, over. Taking the kick now. They're pushing it up, they're working everything. Jeez. Doing everything they can to keep in. They got a light patch, that's gonna help them. There's another major bullet coming, but I think it's gonna go behind their stern, so that won't hurt them. It's funny how sometimes you want wind, then other times you're praying, please God, just give me a breather. Ooh, look out. Oh, Smeg behind us, out of shot. Witty's doing his witty, and he's throttled down. He went low. He's going to need his uh, kite again to go over the top of this island. So, as we saw yesterday, danger zone. Danger zone, for sure. And we've got those uh, yachts out here doing their Wednesday racing. So that's an, you know... Ooh, what's he got? He's got a bit of light stuff, actually. Yeah. But I tell you, I'm looking across. He's about to get a bullet. He's about 10 seconds away. Oh, look out. This is so dodgy. This is death here, right Man, here. He, they're, they're about to get a major bullet. Oh, they're look, back underway. Look to your left, boys. Look, they're getting ready. Look, they're going for the drop. They saw that. Good management. Seven through. And Alex accelerate. Alex to Lewis. Cam will be looking for that pressure. He's starting to get, get himself organised. He's hooking up. Same with Alex. Bought rags right Dialed through it up. It. Sailed to the pressure. Rag rolls right over. Look, and Alex is working the main. That's dangerous. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that, that, that about Alex. I just said you need two arms. <laughs> what about your teeth? Yeah, well, that's that's what you do on the opposite. So the killer still use your teeth. That's why I haven't got any teeth. Yeah, exactly. All right. So, um, C Tech will be. When are we going to? When are we going to launch again? When are we going to launch now? Oh man! Need to launch now. But it's a windward set. That's difficult because the breeze is so far on the beam. They did that well. Okay, here we go. So they only lose one place out of that, but it's brought the long in the pack back. Where's our mate Smeg? Always oh, trying to uh, flog it all the way round, and he's in a lot of pain. So he was third before, wasn't he, Mark? Yamaha yeah, got through that all right. He's going around beside us. So Witty's lost what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine,
You know who's had another goal. great run to this island is Howie Hamlin, mate. They were deeper than deep up the top. I didn't say anything. I wanted to, but I couldn't get it, get it across. But look where Howie is now. He's got right up in about, what, a dozen, 12th spot, 14th spot. He was way out the back door. So uh, another great run by those guys. It's been a big shake-up, hasn't it, Bob? It's, oh, uh, the ma- I mean, the main news is that uh, God Love at Seven have used this as another good excuse to extend their lead. So they had to manage the shipping, which there was quite a lot of, the two barges, the gusts, and everything in between, the best of everyone. Rag and Famish, though, pretty smart too. They've come right up into a solid second position. Uh, the losers probably, Smeg, got caught to the low, the low side of that ferry, and we didn't show it on camera, there's too much going on in front of us, but behind us, Smeg got the wrong side of that barge and ran out of breeze, did a little tea bag, half a cap size, recovered, but en- anyway, lost about 10 places. Very sad for them. And here, look at this group here. Here's the group. They've done pretty nicely too. DeLonghi played that nicely. Yamaha played it nicely. Merce, not bad. Rag and Famish have just got themselves caught the wrong side of the latest little puff that came in. So they slipped back from second to third. C-Tech, after their dramas of getting around the corner with a spinnaker up and a spinnaker down and all sorts of stuff that you saw, well, Rag and Famish have uh, just slipped back behind them. So the overall score at the moment, uh, our leader is well and truly gone. Got love at seven. They're not that far off the, uh, the rounding mark. Second is SeaTech, and in front of you now, Rag and Famish. Another great performance by DeLonghi. They're stringing these races together, and just behind them, another good performance from Yamaha. They, of course, went pretty nicely yesterday. I think they're lying about fourth or fifth overall. And a surprising day for uh, Merskla. We haven't seen them all regatta, and today, not only have they started well, but they've continued pretty nicely as well. I'll give you the tip, Mark. All these bats, it's like the charge of the light brigade. They're spread right out, but they're all pretty much in a line. They're going to arrive at this turn mark together. And there'd be a lot of screaming and yelling. I don't know where Pure Blonde sits in that lineup, but uh, that would add some fruit to it. <laughs> yeah, they're just behind, actually. Um, we're behind us, we're looking at uh, Plants Online following us towards the bottom mark for the first time. We're just passing Point Piper, so we're just a minute or so away from that bottom mark. And here is the group that we're looking at uh, fighting for second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. There's SeaTech to the left. She's currently holding a second position. DeLonghi is now just overtaken Rag, goes up into third. It's all action stations here. The puffs come and go as they try to get around Shark Island. It's Seven's around, mate. Here. Through that bottom mark right now. Yeah, Bob just updating us. That's exactly right. Gotta love it, Seven. We'll try and get a watch on them. Um, Gotta love it, Seven. Our first around the, first, the bottom mark for the first time. So at the end of lap one, Race four, our leader is Gotta Love at seven. And you can see today how much more traffic there is on the harbour. We were saying yesterday there was virtually no traffic at all. Well, Wednesday is a busy time to be on the harbour. There's Wednesday afternoon racing. And all these sailing boats you see around us here aren't just random sailing boats. They're all doing some kind of an afternoon race. So, and everyone has equal rights on a race course. It's the same rule book. Everyone has to respect uh, the water equally. Even a big championship like the skiffs, they've got to give way when it's not there right away. Tell you one mover in this pack also, you were talking about Howie a second ago. Asco's been a big mover on this run. Asco really pushed the edge before they jibed. Yeah. Got really pushed the edge and, and with the lowest boat on this on this leg and it's paid dividends for them. They've actually come up to the pack that we're about to see go around the mark. DeLonghi pushing the ley line super hard. They've got to get their shoot down though, that's a thing. But they do have rights on SeaTech, or no, SeaTech will get clear ahead. Yeah, very nicely done by SeaTech. Was that really well judged? He got Spinnaker away early. Nice aggressive selling by DeLonghi. They want to come here and uh, get another great result today. Came in a little bit hot, but that's no worries. They got the Spinnaker down, nice and tidy. They get around just ahead of Rag, who do a rather better rounding. So uh, with Gotta Love at Seven having already gone around in first position, second is SeaTech, third is DeLonghi, and who's in fourth position? Rag and Famish! <laughs> we have this, there's all the kids here, the spectator, that's a special spectator boat for Rag and Famish alongside us right here now. There'll be an excited bunch of kids from the Scott College. Look at the pile here now, mate. Oh, look at it, it's a full park up, all sorts of rule infringements going on probably, but uh, that's kind of what happens on these kind of roundings. Well, you can see for yourself who's going where. There's Smeg trying to uh, get back into the groove. The groove they certainly had in the upwind leg, but downwind it all went a little bit upside down for them. But I think they've probably ended up at about 10th, probably no worse than that. Oh, and here comes Pure Blonde. Stand by. Yeah, here comes our favourite Pure Blonde. 
Get ready to listen to the vocals. John Winnings Yandu goes round, followed by Lumix. Thurlow Fisher, not used to seeing them that far back. We'll have to have a word with Haley about what's going on on that boat. On our social media guru, Haley has a particular interest in one of the crewmen. That's all I can say for now. We'll try and find out what's going on in their camp. But anyway, Michael Coxon, Thurlow Fisher, tax away, trying to get, uh, he can't, can he? he's got to do something different. And he goes around in about 12th, 13th, 14th. And next around, Knight oh, Frank. Way on. Oh man, overboard. Frank with a very late drop. Behind them, Compass Global Markers and Aeon had a bit of a coming together. It was a windward boat call from Aeon saying, windward boat keep clear. And in the end, there was a collision, one man overboard, but they're up and running, they're out and sailing. Compass Global Markers goes round, making all a bit of a drama of getting around this bottom mark. And Knight Frank, not quite sure what happened to them on the run, Warwick. I mean, they were doing well up win, weren't they? They, they were. were. One of our best boats out of the left. Yeah. Top five, maybe well, top ten for sure. They clearly had a problem down wind. But those barges, just talk briefly about the barges approaching shot. We've never seen those <laughs> They might before. have freaked them Yesterday out Yesterday we it. saw one. Today they threw another one in there. Well, I reckon Bernie Eccleston's getting involved. Just wants to liven things up. Chucking a few more chicanes. Uh, a few more obstacles for the boys to contend with. But, uh, yeah, today plenty to contend with, given it's a midweek. But I, I don't know, I didn't see what happened tonight, Frank. Obviously, you know, we can only be in one spot at one time, so it's difficult to pick up on what happens to everybody. They've been a big loser, haven't they? Just thinking, looking at those uh, skiffs all approach that bottom turn mark, a bit like putting 18 foot skiffs in a blender, and that's what you get. <laughs> But all well behaved. They were. So just um, as a delta, seven had a one minute uh, 26 second lead at the bottom mark. And at the top mark, it was only uh, 15 seconds. So they've had a blinder of a run. Breeze has increased now, guys. My word, it has. This is definitely fresher than the start of the race. This is good five knots more breeze than what we had at the start. So all that theorizing and wondering what rig to put in, this is definitely a second sail breeze now. And given the corners they've got to sail around here, a big, big rig on that run wouldn't have been nice, would it? Uh, and a lot slower now upwind. I think pretty much everyone here is saying the minute you're on the crossover, you're best to go small rig. Seems to be uh, just a whole lot more efficient upwind and only occasionally slower down when we're in the crossover. So we are halfway up, or a third of the way up the beat for the second lap. And what we're looking at here is a, a newly consistent and yet again quick DeLonghi. We haven't said that all season, but another great race that DeLonghi's guys are putting together. And to the left of them, there's Rag and Famish. That's the boat, remember, that capsized when they were in third or fourth at the end of yesterday's race because they broke their trapeze strings. All three went to the attachment point, which is a great shame for Rag. It's had such a great race. Already got a retirement on the score list, so they've now got two retirements and only one result. Not going to be a great overall result for Jack McCartney's boys, but all they can do is go out there and have as much fun as they can and score the best results they can. We did a little interview with them last night, which is onto YouTube later on today. Um, and Rat, he was being very positive about his state of affairs. So he has got a baby, his first ever baby coming soon, which will distract him. But he just said, well, what can we do? This one wasn't meant to be for us, two bits of gear failure. And uh, all we can go is try and win a few races. So a very positive attitude. But Jack's like that, isn't he? He's a, he's a good boy. He's, he's a very talented sailor, but very calm on the water and calm off it. Well, the only one thing I've got to add to that, Mark, we were talking about the other day for gear failures. And if you're going fishing for sharks, you want to take heavy line with you, baby. I rest my case. Yeah, but both those gear failures, you know, it's, it's not a maintenance issue. Because both those, both those components were brand new before this regatta. And both those components he's been using all season. So, just hasn't rolled his way. But you're right, he's a, he's a good guy, really positive guy.
Have a look at uh, the DeLonghi team. Going through the water nicely, looking nice and settled. Grant Rollison looking upwind, getting a feel of things. Pressure is up and down. Pressure is definitely up and down. Yeah, Mark just pointing out that just ahead and to lured of DeLonghi, got Rag and Famish and SeaTech with about a, I don't know, 80 metre separation. And Rag and Famish is sailing maybe 10 degrees higher than SeaTech. And I think in slightly better pressure. So there's plenty of uh, opportunities to claw back with shift and pressure today. So just to recap, as best we can tell, the places at the moment are seven first, rags, Rag and Famish second. Sea Tech, I'd say, would be third. And then I think uh, DeLonghi. Good job, boys. And at the bottom mark, it was uh, seven Sea Tech, DeLonghi, and Rag. So Rags moved up a place and uh, in fact moved up moved up two places so uh, the boys are on the march yeah, they, were, they were pretty sharp yesterday weren't they I mean, that battle they had with the plants online and they were very, when they actually broke that uh, to piece string they were all, definitely on the march they were going on going really nicely and uh, they luckily despite the gear failure they've sort of refound that setup that, those settings there's not they've been good or they've been good or regatta really i mean if you they didn't have those failures. I mean, the guys have been in second place, you'd have to say. Yeah, I think you're right. And that, that's a fair reflection of the performance on the water, but two bits of gear failure, and that changes the scores, which is a great shame for them. But all they can do is uh, just bang in a whole bunch of seconds, well, maybe even first. At the moment, they've got a lot of ground to make up on God Love at 7 are leaded by, it looks like, at least a minute or maybe two minutes. But they're cleaning out the, uh, the boats near to them with relative ease. Seem to have a little bit more pace, and they're going in the right way all the time. That's Rag and Famish with the dark sails. It was about exactly where they are now, yesterday, on the last lap, where all of a sudden the trapeze wire attached, and that's where all three trapeze strings joined together and attached the mast. That was the place where the failure happened. Jack told me he'd actually checked that very fitting um, before they went sailing that day, and he couldn't work out an all, at all why it had gone. But sometimes that's the gremlins. They come and grab you when you least expect it. So out in the middle of the harbour, we've got a little naval boat just going to throw up a bit of wash, but Rag and Famish crossing ahead of SeaTech in the slight distance. That's our second and third battle, but maybe DeLonghi, who are just about to take our transom, coming along here now. This is uh, Simon Nern, the club Commodore. Been at this game for a long time, and Grant Rollison been at it probably even longer than he has. And Kieran, one honorary Kiwi on their boat. So there's uh, plenty of chat on board, you can be sure. And there the three of them go. And a much better performance, I mean, They've got, a, they've got a coach, haven't they? A coach we've talked about, Bunny. Um, I guess he must have made a bit of a difference. Or something's on, happened. But, oh, watch out for the big waves. Sorry, I didn't see that one until it was too late. Well, luckily, we have our... There's a courtesy of the Royal Australian Navy. Yes, yeah, so our stabilised camera, only it's keep there, but it didn't keep us <laughs> stable or dry. It just kept, the hopefully, the camera. So if you're watching that tucked up on the sofa. We just had a tweet from uh, Julian Bethwaite in Vancouver who's watching this with a I cold beer in his I, hand. And I, texted I, I texted Julian before the start and I said, What's your, uh, what do you reckon your course record was in the AAMI? And the answer is? His record, it was oh, time-wise, uh, an hour. Is that what he said? No, he hasn't oh, said that yet. He'll probably get back to us. Oh, now, he's, okay. now he can hear us talking about him. So anyway, Julian, tell us if you know, think you remember what your alleged record was. Just to, uh, send a tweet or send a... I'm not sure how you're communicating with Hayley, maybe on Facebook. Wherever you're doing it, do it again, and we will uh, consider your application <laughs> <laughs> to be the owner of the record. Today, no records, although it's another uh, soft tide, flat water set, set up, not as much wind as yesterday. Not, they're not going nearly as fast, are they? No, no. 
Well, they just haven't got the breeze, as you said. But interesting there, just uh, diverging from the great Julian for a second, Sea Tech came back to Rag and Famish, so they're having a good battle. It's not just Rags uh, stomping away. Another good battle down here, Warwick, uh, with uh, the Red Mainsail on Smeg, Howie Hamlin and his guys, Dan Phillips and uh, our yeah. super powerful Bowman, Skip McCormick. Skippy McCormick, that's him. And uh, look at Cocker, he's got his hands full, Cocker, he just can't, can't buy a ticket to a uh, fair ride here. He's got to work, work, work all his way through. These boats are not easy boats to get through, are they? No, but the, there is overtaking opportunities, so I think Thurlow's moved up a bit, potentially we'll have a look in a second. But just going back to Howie, I mean, you know, their scores are all over the joint. Well, well I shouldn't say that. There's some big scores, but if you want to look at consistency, besides, uh, let's say, I don't know, second place, or even second, Howie's done, Howie and Daniel and, uh, and Skip have done a great job. Oh, I watch. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, they've had a six, eight, seven, so they're very consistent. Single figures, and through a variety of conditions too, eh? Let's go and have a close look at uh, Team Howie. So Howie, uh, for the last 19 years, has, has been coming out and sailing. I'm not sure if all of them are in the 18s, but I think most are. Stays with uh, Ian, Ian and Alex Murray at their house every year. And uh, you don't think he might be getting a bit of intel onto what Ian's doing on seven? Just a bit. I think the word is the number two rig's identical and there's slight differences in the one rig. So Howie in the past has tried to do his own thing. He's worked with Jay Glasser from California. He was actually the, I think he was the first guy to come out with a square top mainsail. But in those days he had, had an alley and fiberglass tip mast, so it's quite a different deal to make it work. But he's elected to just go for that north package, a bit of tweak and intel with what Ian's doing and he's certainly working for him. Yeah, as you said, very consistent. Only two other boats who've done single figures. And that's Michael Coxon who hasn't had a great series but has stayed in single figures and of course our regatta leader who's got three of the best single figures you can have. That's a one, one and a one. Talking of which, uh, that very boat, God Love at Seven, is already at the top mark for the second time. And we've got, just looking at uh, Howie in a plants online on a little port starboard with a ferry behind him, but up at the top of the course, God Love at Seven is approaching the top mark and goes around the top mark as our leader. We'll uh, have a chance to catch up with them in a little bit, but they go around now. We'll set the uh, clocks and try and give you some kind of a delta. First round, God Love at Seven. One and a half laps gone, halfway through the race. And they have extended their lead, that's for sure. Second is looking like it's going to be a motoring rag and famish. You've had a really good beat here gone from fourth to what I think is going to be second. Quite a nice little battle between SeaTech and DeLonghi for third and fourth. Yamaha just behind them. Mersk is hanging there. Uh, yeah, Mersk is in decent shape, isn't she here? She's still hanging on really nice. Just ahead of uh, Thurla Fisher. That's Mersk on camera right now. Terrific start and they've held it together pretty well since then. I'm, I'm only expressing um, surprise because they've had such a poor series so far. We know that Graham knows plenty about setting a skiff but he's really not been on form this series but today putting that all behind him and giving us a nice little performance currently lying just at the top 10 and getting ourselves up to the top mark we're just uh, about 50 meters away from it we're going to take a nice close look at the rounding of the second third fourth and fifth boats and on port ley line it's rag and famine so they look like they've got that ley line nicely sorted sea tech comfortably on lay two and DeLonghi are going to have to uh, take their turn in the queue Approach. We're going to maybe just come right here, Peter. Just going to watch the roundings of these uh, three boats. 
up nice and close to it. So Rag and Famish approach. Pretty chunky delta for I've got to love it seven. Give you the mass on that in a second, but there goes Rag and Famish. Great beat by Jack McCartney and his team. Terrific performance, just plain fast, I think. Same way as everybody else around them, but just had a bit more horsepower. Next around that was C Tech, Alex Failings. And here comes the next one, which is DeLonghi. Another great beat by DeLonghi. These three boats were in very close proximity at the last bottom mark. Not an awful lot has changed between the three of them. Just Rag and Famish managing to sneak ahead. DeLonghi slipping back a tiny amount, but not a lot between those three boats. So that is the second, third, fourth battle. And approaching in fifth, Yamaha, who was the best of the Kiwis yesterday. Here they approach her just from our right. They've overlaid by quite a lot. A big two-cell reach ease coming on here. Maybe not as much tired as people are predicting, or maybe it's just a little left shift at the top here. Other way round, there goes Yamaha round in fifth place. And a little gaggle of boats, what we saw yesterday, lots of boats arriving in groups. Well, the group coming to you, you can, there you see it, there's Mojo, Maersk, Thurlow Fisher, Harry Hamlin, and just off the back of them, Asco. I think Asco might try and join this group. I think they're going to give it a good go. Mojo Tack onto port and that's a decent ley line they've avoided the temptation to overstand like so many have been doing just recently terrific ley line by Lee Napton who immediately gains another 20-30 metres on his pursuers Maersk heavily overlaid as you can see for the amount of reaching going on here as are the next three or four boats so a lot of conservative ley lines going on here and that doesn't get you to the mark all that fast next around is Adding foot blenders. there he goes there's Harry Hamlin, the boat behind with a little Harkon logo. Very discreet, a bit of branding from Harry. Maybe the sponsorship deal wasn't that rich for him. And next around, Asco again, just getting up into this group of plants is online. And there is Smeg. I was kind of expecting maybe a bigger move from David Witt. But He's gone backwards a bit. No. Has gone back a little bit, but he did have that run where he got caught the wrong side of the yep, yep, of all yep. those barges. And the next boat around, that's a few boats we haven't talked about yet today, but not that far back for the leading pack. Here comes Nick Daly on Pure Blonde. Just behind him, a bit of an improvement from John Winning on Yandu. Second on the second on day two. <laughs> Disappointing day for them uh, yesterday. Cutting the corner on a decent ley line. There's uh, Brett Van Munster on Aeon. And eventually we're going to get to Knight Frank and then Panasonic before there's a bit of a gap before anyone else before. Now, so I'd, I'd have you a quick update on what's happening on Thurlow Fisher. We have Haley on board doing our social media. Haley. You are closely related to one of the crewmen. What's well, David Connor, isn't it? Your boyfriend. What's going on? What's going on at the Thurlow Fisher camp? Uh, you know what? I think they really, really want it, and they have done a lot of preparation on the off season. However, they just seem not to be going that fast, and I don't think they really know why. They're trying too hard. That does happen sometimes in sports stuff, doesn't it? Or, uh, or what's going on? Uh, possibly they are. It's the JJ, so that means JJ Cray Cray, as we all call it. But. You know what, it's hard to watch because I know how well they can sail and um, I just really hope that they get it together over the next couple of days. You might have to use your social media platform to explain the JJ Cray Cray. <laughs> I'll let you do uh, that. I will, I will indeed. JJ Cray Cray is what all of us uh, girlfriends call the JJ season as it sends the boys totally crazy. <laughs> Thanks Hayley. So, I'm not sure, I don't think you guys could quite hear that just then, but Hayley was saying that uh, Apparently, this event is called by the girlfriends and wives. It's called JJ Cray Cray because it sends all the boys crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, it's a girl's Who would have thought? Who could ever guess that? What a what a what a what a sexist insult! Or, 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 let's let's. Have... So, um, I got the delta at the top mark there, guys, and it was uh, a minute thirty-one between seven and rag and famish. So in terms of the difference between first and second, it was a five second gain to seven as opposed to where they were at the bottom mark. But we've got to remember that Ragged Famish was uh, fourth around the bottom mark. So you know they've potentially done their feet in uh, the same or maybe slightly quicker time than seven. So you know, it gives you a bit of an indication. It's, it's not just a runaway. Now look at this Warwick, Thurlow went around that top turn mark about a boat length in front of Howie. Who do you reckon's alerting now out of those two? I reckon it's Howie. Yeah, possibly. I mean Thurlow's just starting to come into new pressure on the left. 
Yeah. And you know what I'm talking about? get the pressure first. That's the thing. You know what I'm talking about? Really, is the uh, Dan Phillips' ability to pick really great hot drive angles. It's his forte. Yeah, no, no doubt he's really good at it. The only thing is they're just a little bit soft. Thurlows, these guys on the western shore have just got a lane of pressure. Now, how he starts to get it, and uh, we'll get the answer to that in about 10 seconds time as Thurlow will have to drive, change direction, and they'll be on uh, a convergence. Look at this, Smeg's going in for more of this pressure down Not the shore. Not a bad idea, not a bad idea. Yeah, because it's definitely softer, it's, there's a, a lane. It's about 150 metres, well, or 200 metres wide, this lane of pressure. Now Thurlow jibes. Team USA has rights. There's not much in it. I think Thurlow's going to have to rag their shoot Ooh. to get around. Yes, they do. So, not much in Team it. USA just ahead. They'll be going in for their drive. Look, Smeg's going for another one. They've been quite aggressive and working this pressure. They complete their drive. Still waiting to get up to full speed, full horsepower. Tommy Clout now out in the out in the trapeze. A good drag race between Thurlow and Smeg. Tell you what, how he's, you know, I think he'll be right, but potentially running the risk of a slight overlay down there. Ding dong battle here, you got uh, pure blonde just up on their hip. Asco in front of them. Merce Klein. Clients is online, it's going to be uh, 18s in a blender again down here, was it? Down this bottom turn mark. Well, there's going to be traffic down here too, Kilo. There's a lot of yachts. yachts. Oh, add, that, add that to the blender. Yeah, and all the yachts have rights, because they're all going up to their finish towards Rose Bay. And all these boats are on Port Tech. Buckle up, could be good. Yeah, this could be good. It's like going to the Coliseum, was it? Yeah, you mentioned mentioned Harry Hamlin having a possible problem down there. Uh, you know, if he if he has to drop his kite to get round Bradley's, let's have a quick little look, Peter, to your right. Harry Hamlin getting a bit greedy to get into that lane where we said there's more breeze. Well, he'll be right. He's he'll got to get right. past this first post. Well, he's got Dan Phillips on board. He, he was on board the smeg when they hit that rock, wasn't he, a few years <laughs> back? He knows all about hitting things at high speed. Dan always picks hot angles, Smaggy. Now, this is a hot angle. They're having a good old look at the rocks down here, aren't they? This not far. You see the shoreline just behind. You see just how close they are. In the end, uh, that was judged. Maybe it's going to come good for them. They are going to have the best lane in here. The mark's down there. Yeah, the mark is to lure it. So that, no, that was pretty smart work from them. <laughs> Did get a decent lane. One of only three boats with single finna figure finishes so far. In the moment, they're just outside single figures. They'll want to... Get a little hurry up through here, try and keep their record going. Just looked at Skip McCormick, Mark. He's got about three turns of that sheet wrapped around his big uh, palm of his hand. He's not letting it go. Oh. He's just gonna, just gonna use his legs. Not letting it go though. Tell you what, he's going down here well. Look at Pure Blonde. He's yeah. caught right up to this group. He's actually rolled further Fisher. He's coming into Smeg. We haven't seen an awful lot of uh, small rig, heavy air, great performance with Pure Blonde, but today, well, upwind they're doing all right, but downwind, on fire. Well, Mick Murray is a big part of that, I guess. He's a very damn fine sheet hand. He started with uh, uh, the guys on Ohio last year. The UK, Ricky Peacock, steered that boat, remember? And uh, Rick Murray sailed on the sheet in that boat. So at the front of the race course, where, while the leaders have been going around the bottom mark, we've been looking at this boat. Gotta love at seven, still have a clear lead of about one and a half minutes. Behind them, Rag and Famish held on to their second. In third place, it's still SeaTech. Fourth place, it's DeLogging. Similar kinds of gaps to... The ones we saw at the top marks and not a huge amount has changed. But Yamaha has closed up to DeLong. Yamaha in fifth. Best of the Kiwis. They, they are. When uh, next round is going to be Mojo just going around the bottom mark right now. They'll be round in sixth. So remember, it's the bottom mark for the last time. There's just one more lap to go up to the top. Back to the finish, Var Shark Island. Var those two barges. Barges could come into play again. I've got a feeling sure. we're going to be talking barges in about 20 minutes, Warwick. <laughs> yeah. Next round is uh, Here's the Plants is online. Nick, Bale, Nick Daly got through both of those boats. Lance is in eighth. Asco, get it off early. I think you're in ninth. Mask, 
in ninth or tenth. This is interesting. And watch just this. outside the top ten is the is the so watch it. the remaining group. Sorry, mate. Just watch this. You see, like pure blonde arced up uh, again. Yeah. Howie had rights there. Definitely had rights. He was overlapped for a month there. Well, how did Howie go in the end? He's a big uh, shaker and mover down there. Yeah, but he had overlap all the way in. I mean, he had overlap at the Bradleys. I mean, <laughs> but he's held it. Come on, Nick. Don't lose it. Smeg slides inside pure blonde. Well, Nick Daly just let those two places yeah. go through him again. <coughs> Furlough bales, they have to bail, they're in so much gas. But look at that, Knight, who had rights, Thurlow had a slow tack and couldn't clear Knight's Frank, but there's no point in Knight's Frank giving him a love tap as it would have potentially broken their boat. But Smeg's gone back to the right. Well, they just have to clear it, get a lane. You can't yep. can't go anywhere in that lineup. Yep. Look how high we are looking ahead. Look how high how he's sailing. Look how much gauge he's made off pure blonde and Asco and those boats. Like he's just cranking in that high high mode. Same with Yandu. What? Thurlow's just done a turn. Yeah. Well, they did a turn, and that's the, that's actually really classy. Because they did foul Knights Frank. Not that it was a big foul, but just technically, you know, it was a foul. So they've done their turns and they move on. Yeah, I wonder when you talk about uh, how well Harry's doing now, it might just be clear edge, you think. I mean, a lot of boats to the left are all in dirty air. Harry, Yandu, maybe the only ones in clear air. I think in these conditions, this makes a massive difference, doesn't it? I mean, clear air is always a good thing, but you see quite how big the differential is who's in clear air, who's not. Yeah, I think that pure blonde into the bottom right, that'll be a good one to look on the video, I'm sure, because the uh, pure blonde will be sh did sure that they had rights. And the only question would be, were, was it within three boat lengths or not? But otherwise, you're right, the overlap was established from a long time ago, but if it was not in three boat lengths, of course, it's Paul Starbuck. They were overlapped at Bradley's. So was it three boat lengths? Well, yeah, they were over, yeah, they were yeah. over for a month. Anyway. So now Witty punches back. You got a yacht. Left. Got a yacht on toast. It's not yeah. going to help him. Got a few yachts here to deal with, and it's okay. manage, managing the yachts. See, <laughs> Witty's calling for the yacht to go, go down. He to wanted away. to go. He wanted him to go up. Sorry, down. He, yeah, he went and up. the yacht <laughs> kept coming up. I mean, the, yacht the right thing, but it's not what Witty wanted. <laughs> You need to show cards out here, was it? You need to hold a big cut up. Down. Yeah, that's it. Up. <laughs> Breeze has increased again. Is another yacht for Witty, or was he going to get through him? This has ended up doing what the Seabreeze model said it would do. Yeah, it's kicked again. You're right. up around 20 uh, to 20 was in my yeah, and i tell you what witty sure. nearly went for big rig he was the last to pull the trigger to put his rig in well it should help him i mean he, he had a great day yesterday with this sort of pressure that he's getting now there's a lot of boats opportunities for any of these guys to move forward in this pack on this last lap but he's got starboard on pure blonde pure blonde tax they've got to deal with the captain cook this oh. big cruise ship <laughs> another floating chicane out here manly ferry in bad yep, ferry coming down plenty going on guys are pushing out to the right more on this beat interesting because the tides well and truly uh, flooding now. Yeah, that's right, Killer. Tell you who's hanging in there is DeLonghi. Staying calm, they're keeping it together. It's 
So I reckon that's blowing 20. Yeah, I'd agree. How quick are we going, Kilo? 16. So it's 36 knots across the deck, so if I sound like I'm yelling, I don't mean to, it's just we can't hear it. Seven's right up there in Chowder Bay. I just spotted him, Mark. He's, <laughs> he's cleared out. Oh, he's classic seven leads again. Pulled it right out. Still a great little battle going on in this midfield, isn't there? Plenty of squabbling going on. Yandu, Lumix, Smeg, Maersk, Harkin, Team USA, Asco, Knights Frank, Appliances Online, who had a great day yesterday. Their boat was going well. He's getting up. So this this pack here is fighting for seventh place. And there's a fast improving Asco, but they've got more work to do on camera now. And just to their right, there's Harry Hamlin. He's under a bit of pressure, isn't he? He wants to get that single figure result if he possibly can to make it four single figures in a row. He might just do it. He's just got the right place to do that. Well, mate, I reckon he'd be just gritting his teeth. I reckon he's pretty comfortably in front of those guys. Well, not comfortably, but I think he's put them to bed in his own mind. And I think he's, his next target to uh, Asco and uh, Appliances. That's the way he'd be dealing with it, wouldn't he? Just attack these next two boats. Well, that's the right attitude, isn't it? It's the way well, to look I at think it, so. for sure. But it is, uh, you know, we're getting towards the end of a race. It's getting physical. Everybody's getting a bit tired. and. As fit as how he is, he's extraordinarily fit, um, but he still is 60 something and 62, and it does take a toll. You can't defy the time clock, so he's doing pretty well to hang on in there. But it's going to be, he'll be feeling as much as anyone else is. Pretty physical, the sailing, isn't it? It's, um, he skiffs every time you tack, there's a whole load of energy and a whole load of timing and balance and all that stuff required to execute it well. And he only takes a little error, as we did see one from Harry several days ago and from other people as well. One little error and you can be a swimmer awfully suddenly and then it all goes from bad to worse. But let's hope they hold it together. It'd be great to see him do another single figure. Setting well for now. They did that bottom mark very well indeed and came out of it with a great setup, great speed into Bradley's and it's gotten to where they are now really. It's pulled them just ahead of that gaggle of close pursuers. Up front it's the same old story. Gotta love it, seven are just marching off into the distance. We'll tell you when they're getting close to the top mark so you can uh, we can set our watches to see how far they are, but uh, it's plenty is the answer. Second uh, around is Wilby, Rag and Famish. Both those boats are still a good five minutes plus from being at the top mark. The Rag and Famish are in clear second. SeaTac managing to keep it together in third. DeLonghi fourth, but under pressure from Yamaha and under pressure from Mojo as well. We'll see if DeLonghi can keep that together, but once again, we're seeing them right up at the pointy end of the fleet. Good news for those guys. Right now on the left-hand side, there is Harry Hamlin with Smeg, just having to tack off the shoreline. Very aggressive tackers on Smeg. I think it's Maddie Walk on the front of the boat. It's another of these big, very athletic, agile bowmen who just launch themselves across the boat, grab onto the wire, and boy, is that nice for a helmsman to know they've got that coming their way, all that writing moment of flying across the boat. I'll tell you something, Mark, I've just been watching Marcus Ashley Jones on this tack and he's, uh, his left hand must have uh, pins and needles in it because he keeps shaking the hell out of it when you've got pins and needles. So he's probably going to enjoy tacking off and give that hand a break. But a cramp but in that's the hand. Cramp. Yeah, yeah, cramp, cramp or pins arm, and needles. Cramp in the legs, it does happen a long tack, doesn't it? Well, cyclists get that too, don't they, through the hands and wrists. You don't you shake your wrist every now and then. It's so there's Asco just to the left of the picture, the uh, Bob, boat, boat that Bob was just talking about. Just got a little bit of windward control over this little gaggle of boats nearby. And Harry, Spag, Panasonic, Maersk still holding in there. Pierre Le Boulon wanting to come back into the action. Knight Frank. Yandu, we haven't talked about them much today. They're actually into this group as well. Uh, John Winning, 
He, uh, he's also one of those boats that we were talking about coming out of the, came out of the mark well, didn't they? They made a gain straight away after the rounding, and rather than sitting in a whole lot of dirt, they got the setup really nicely sorted, and big gain versus the boats around them. Hey, Marcus, should be good, that group you're just talking about, when they get up to the two-barge challenge going to Shark Island, should be yeah. quite interesting. Yeah, we had a comment on uh, one of the social media channels, um, again from Canada, saying two barges is pretty interesting, but where would the commentary cap put the third barge if they could? <laughs> the maximum effect? Well, it's a good question. High-quality question. Is what well, I, I think the third barge is under tail. It's moving. <laughs> the yeah. moving chicane. I like it. We kind of did have a third barge. Top Mart last time we had a bunch of sloping cruisers, didn't we? They became a, a mobile but a chicane, but at least it was a small one for them. So this is the pursuing group. Uh, we're having one more look at them, then we're going to go look out the front of us where the uh, the leaders are going to appliances is online, who is the uh, leader of this particular little group. They did go well yesterday, didn't they? They were on fire yesterday. They were, they were having a great battle with Rag and Famish, and again, they seem to be coming through the fleet. Yeah, no, they were. And now we're, um, here they go into their tack. Boat was going through the water very nicely. Still, obviously, is today. Still got a bit they of pirate. They were twisted yesterday, Kilo. They had a lot of twist in there. Yeah, in their yeah. Jib. What do you think? Well, it's just conditions. It's not as fresh oh, right. as it was. True. Just notice they've all got their pirate um, harnesses on yeah, still. Yeah, got the old harnesses. Like a bit of pirate. So I was just looking up the course and I was just reflecting. I mean, you'd have to say in this regard, in terms of pure performance and speed, Rag and Famish has been the closest to 70. If it wasn't for their two gear failures, that, and they were in good position both times. Got a lot that's just going around that turn mark, Warwick, so you get your... It's there, just turned it. Like six, on his way to the judge. Yeah, 65 minutes and 23 seconds. So it just shows you how fast yesterday's race was. The finish was only basically four and a half minutes from now. So we're just coming around looking at DeLonghi. This is the chasing pack. In the middle there, there is CTEC. Yamaha definitely made a bit of a gain into this little group. As we mentioned uh, just a minute or so ago, got a lot of seven, have gone around the top mark for the last time with a, a clear lead. Just uh, downwind to the finish bar, Shark Island, via the two barges. And uh, we've got a stopwatch on that, so we'll tell you what the delta is, but it looks like it's going to be uh, more than a minute. And in these conditions, they're doing what, well over 20 knots downwind. That's a hell of a distance. Second round of the mark is going to be Rag and Famish. We're just coming up to the boy now. Rag and Famish on ley line. Just round the right here, Peter. We'll just get, pick up Rag and Famish on the rounding. Just come around here if we could, Peter, to the right. Sorry about, sorry, we got a bit too much wind here to do that. We just had to do a quick fast forward, and we've got here in time. There is Rag and Famish. And they go around, a very comfortable. Second, one minute 20 on my. Uh, they pulled not, back, they pulled, they pulled 10 seconds out of seven on that beat. They've, they've pulled 10 seconds out of seven on that beat. Interesting. Ele Interesting. Or 11 <laughs> seconds to be exact. What's 10 seconds here, are they? Well, they all count, don't they? Bring them together. <laughs> Take oh, 10 seconds every beat, that's that's enough yep. for me. Yeah, absolutely. So yes. I reckon we're getting, this would be the f fourth second place we've had in this room, isn't it? Johnny Winning got a second. Uh, a different boat every time. Yeah, right? so yeah, there's a that's bit of that. We're getting at. There's a bit of familiarity to who's coming first, isn't there? Now we're up here, we can go wherever we want. We're just to no, explain our, what we do with the camera. When we've got to get up, upwind, we're doing 20 knots into 20 knots of breeze. 40 knots is beyond the, the working capability <laughs> of our stabilised camera. So our cameraman wisely points wherever he can to stop the whole uh, But we got there just in time to see what we wanted, which is the boat two, go around the top mark for the last time. Well, this is the race for third. You're yeah. looking at it. And you can tell Bob's confident in the boat handling these boats because here we are on a direct extension of the ley line. He's pretty sure they're going to bear away and not no, go straight No, I'm not that us. sure. Oh, you're quite sure. You're well positioned. They're coming at us. There's the mark on the left. And there's SeaTech line up for the bear away. They go around in third. Yamaha, bit of a mover here. They have got into and overtaken DeLonghi. 
So we have a Kiwi boat in third at SeaTech. We have another Kiwi, David uh, McDermott in Yamaha. Another good day for him. He goes around in fourth. DeLonghi still pretty close into this group. They can make that place back. But they have dropped one. DeLonghi go around in fifth place. And Mojo, I was kind of expecting Mojo to make more of an impression into this group of four. I think what it says is the three ahead of the match. Okay, you're back. We got, we got Vish. We got it all there. Okay. So, so we just. What we've got is the fleet running away from it. Okay. Well, welcome back to us. I think you can hear us again. We just had a quick battery switch over. Quick stop. Batteries go at the most inconvenient times, but the good news is we have spares. We're loaded with a spare, and we're going to rattle down here as fast as we can. Point the camera as best we can. We might have to point wherever it has to go just because of our fast forward speed. Get down the bottom and see what's happening on this great barge rounding off Shark Island. And God love it, seven. All I can tell you is they are round the back of Shark Island. I'm not sure we'll ever catch them up for the finish. To keep our eyes on. Well, I reckon. That was like a McLaren pit stop, that. Smooth, seamless, oh. we knew exactly where everything oh. was. <laughs> Chalk it up, boys. Mate, right. they're getting there, learning by experience. And Seven's just gone around the back of Shark Island. And uh, just to answer your question before, Mark, the three second place teams thus far have been Yandu, Smeg, and Mojo. So, uh, we're going to miss our barge action this time, but uh, there you go. Listen, looking down here, normally we see boats jiving out, taking the wide line. I think the barge, the barges where they are, are actually forcing people to take a different strategy down here. People are just pointing at the shark island, aren't they? Therefore, they are overstanding, but nobody uh, dares take on the barge. Got a lot of just abreast of Point Pie, but just breaking into Double Bay as we speak on his way to the judge. Hell of a lead. And, and, and just exactly what you said then, it's forced Mojo very high and they're having to do a late drive back. This is just it's so, it's such a, a narrow lane through here. And unfortunately, the optimum lane is exactly where the barges are positioned, basically. Especially as it, you know, if it gets a bit soft. Look at this action here. Smeg going for a drive back. Good battle between Lumix, Pure Blonde, Smeg. David only jibe, he only went about 30 metres. Yeah, What's interesting. That? He's going to have to bail out of there again soon, I think. But think, look at the angle differences. I'd make Mojo's becalmed 45 degrees up on some of the boats, and we've got three boats down. At the, at the turning mark, all flagging their chutes. Well, that, like wow. this, this is really tough. Asco. Well, how do you play this hole, mate? Do you, Go uh, to the beach. I tell you, Howie's got a pretty good line. Team USA's got a pretty good line through here. And I think it was SeaTech. I mean, they nearly ran on the reef there, guys, at the uh, point of Shark Island. They only just got that chute off. Well, Howie's going to pick up two places here. Yeah. Was it? And look. Look at this, SeaTech had to tack. SeaTech's had to tack to get around the wire mark. They just got smacked down onto the point, nearly on the reef, on the eastern side of Shark Island. You're kidding me, he couldn't get up to the mark. He's coming back no, to it. He's, he's had to come back. And look, Mojo's barreling down on so tricky. <laughs> I've never seen that happen before. Well, it's just so it's easily done, isn't it? You leave your decision too late, and you, and you just don't want to get close to that thing. You don't want to have to knock your shoot off. And they've uh, obviously got, they all got a huge bullet. And uh, it was either that or miss the mark or go on the reef. So who's going to be second in this race? Well, Rag and Fanny. Where is he? Rag is down there. He's about to go oh, to gotcha. his final drive. Or maybe second last jive. I think seven's across. I think uh, seven's finished. Ding dong battle between DeLonghi and Yamaha, is it for third? Yeah, the podium. third and fourth, that's right. So just to recap, seven first, Rag and Famish second at the moment. And they'll get that unless something goes wrong. DeLonghi and Yamaha locked in a battle. SeaTech, another New Zealand boat in uh, fifth place.
Well, what we should do... That's a massive move from DeLong, isn't it? We saw, as you yeah. said, Bob, not often. A boat actually missed as Mark was sat alongside here. What was happening in front of us? SeaTech couldn't get round it, actually sailed past it the wrong side, then dropped the kite, had to tap up wind to get to it. What a drama. And somehow or other, DeLong managed to squeeze through that, as did Yamaha. DeLong did the best of that lot. DeLong goes from fifth to third. And if that's a podium finish in the JJ Gilman, well, that's some result. Could, if, I hope they hold it. They deserve a bit of... Uh, a bit of nice, a nice break. Not well, a break that it sell well, wouldn't it? That's a skill to do that, and that'll be a lesson that Alex Benny on SeaTac will not forget for a long time. It's horrible when that happens. I mean, amongst this crew, we'll just talk about what we can see in front of us. And here we got a Plancers online and Asco, another great little battle. Dan Phillips has taken. They're just jived now, so he's set up underneath these two for a real skimmer. Three point five. We'll see if that works out. I reckon how he is. He's in 10th position on the water at the moment. So if he can make up one, he goes single figure again. But as you said, they've gone very low lane down on, off uh, point five. We'll look at them in a second. Appliance was line and Asco, both dragging each other quite high up here. That might be painful later on when they're almost certainly going to have to drive back. Right. Great battle going on between Yamaha and DeLonghi. Who's yeah. got that, Mark? Yeah, a long way up front. We'll just tell you what's going on. It's uh, almost too far to see. We might better have just pick it up oh, now. Yeah. Or if we can look out the front of us because of our forward speed, but yeah, it's all about up front. So the right hand boat, the white kite, that is DeLonghi, hoping to get third. Just I think bow forward on Yamaha, who I think are just behind them. Where do we, where's the bars, do you reckon, Warwick? I'm not sure. I think it might be committee boat today. Oh, they were awfully close, those two, weren't they? Yeah, look, Mark, I, 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 I think it was still pin was favoured for sure, but. Depends how much uh, depth the longy had or gauge they had off the Yamaha, and we couldn't tell from where we were. But um, you know, I'll do some numbers, some placings, some finishes, and get an idea where things are. Obviously, it's only provisional, and, and we we don't have all the information, but we'll do our best. The next uh, in front of us here, SeaTac, who are just jiving. They are going to cross the line, relatively unthreatened for fourth place. These are the guys who had to double back round the Shark Island mark. Uh, sorry we couldn't capture that for you, but we were doing a battery change upwind, so we couldn't, we can't be everywhere we want to be, but that's just life. And looking at this line, oh, where's the button? I reckon that's pretty square, That this line, there's not much in it. I don't know who won that DeLonghi Yamaha battle. I can't even see the body language giving us the answer from those two boats. Maybe they don't know themselves who won it. Might have been that close. Could have been. Anyway, next across the line, in sixth position is Mojo. That was a pretty good race for them. Sick for Mojo. Yeah, not bad they, for them. They, they had to work for it. They were way back early. S seven is looking like Asco. That would mean that Appliances would be in eight and Harry Hamlin would be in ninth. He gets himself another single figure result. Terrific job by Harkin Team USA. So here comes Asco. Decent improver today. Certainly the second half of the race. We've seen an awful lot more of them. And there they go in seventh. Well, we thought Asco was over, but uh, he didn't go back. And oh, it might have been did. that uh, Keegan York blocked him out because Keegan went back. He was right on the boat. Good, good memory, Bob. You're right. Well, I mean, from where we were, we weren't absolutely bang on the line, but he did look like he was the wrong side of it. Ooh. Here comes the Plancers on line in eighth. Harry in the end, pushing pretty hard, almost squeezing an eight, but he gets a nine. Another single figure. Good job. Well, he set his sights on those two boats in front of him, that's for sure. And it looks like in tenth... It's going to be the Panasonic the... Lumix. Yeah. <laughs> there goes Panasonic in tenth, and the lineup behind another, yet another gaggle and group of closely knit boats is going to be Aeon from New Zealand. They'll be going across in uh, in eleventh, and it looks like Yandu followed by Smeg followed by Pure Blonde. Certainly today will be a day where Smeg, who are today's sponsor. I think uh, David went on Smeg. Well, it's the day that might have been for him, isn't it? Uh, he got all wrong at the start. Yes, they're still not to, yet to finish. They're going to be 15-ish. Oh, Smeg had out. a pretty poor start, made a massive recovery on the first beat, right. right up into third, and then it all went upside down on that run when they got snookered by the barge. How, tell me this. How did Aon get to cross in that position? When we saw him down here at the turn mark here the last time, he out of it. Like, he had a very bad rounding, and he was right behind the side. I don't know what happened there. Flying somewhere. Dan do next. And uh, 
We're into the mid-teens now. Yandy, pure blonde, pure and Smeg. Bit of frustration on board Smeg. You can see a look on her face, which is how on earth did that happen to us? Yeah. <laughs> the barges. Came and in nipped him on the ankle. And then, that's his second big score too. Yeah, it is. That's absolutely right. We're just talking about the scores on the doors, and we David Wick can't afford another bad one. And unfortunately, he's got a 15. That's not. That's going to hurt him. He's certainly looking for an overall podium finish in this regatta. Well, he can still do it. He's still got three more races to go, but it puts him under pressure. Third official crossing the line now. Same story for them. This is not a single figure result. So this will absolutely have to be their discard if they're going to end up in the top three. So Mojo moves to second, Mike. Mojo moves to second in the regatta so far. And then tied in third at this stage will be Harkin, Team USA. And uh, let me just, just double check. Asco. With just four. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, I got that wrong. Sorry, I got that wrong. Um, Mo, <laughs> no, yeah, no pressure. It's hard. I've got bits of paper and pencils and uh, got, got an office assistant. Computer, no, I don't. Um, yeah, Mojo goes into se second. Did I say that? Yeah. Mojo goes into second. Harkin and. Harko and Asko move into third. Mark, with just the four races to go, isn't it? We've now got a Thursday here in Sydney, so we have another race tomorrow. Friday's a lay day, so a day off from Friday, so. So what are we coming out to watch? Gotta love it to get five. You can go to work on Friday if you want to, but you can't. You better not go to work tomorrow. Come and stay with us. Watch it live if you're in this part of the Southern Hemisphere. If you're somewhere else, watch it live if you can, or watch the recorded version. Recorded version of what we're doing now goes up within about an hour or two of it being live. So, at your leisure, watch the race. Um, fast forward if you get bored with what we're talking about, but. Race season has been pretty interesting. Lots to look at. I think so. Well, listen, we should wrap this up. Uh, as Mark was saying, tomorrow's uh, another race. Got to love it. Just keeps racking them up. So uh, get back here tomorrow. Another nice day forecast, I believe. What have we got, Nor'easter again? Or are we changing? Yeah, yeah. East Nor'east or something like that. Having a great time. Wish the tech had uh, come our way a bit. But um, batteries, I love them. So come, we'll talk to you in the park or off the jetty tomorrow afternoon for race five. Come back to you then. Cheers for now.